In today's video, we're going to be going over some new information referring to that Arctic invasion that's coming up. Basically, multiple Arctic blasts in the upcoming pattern are expected, according to models, over the next couple of weeks. So we're going to be talking mostly about that today. But first things first, we're actually taking a look at our current radar imagery. And there's quite a bit going on here, including a tornado warning in Texas. We'll talk about that in a little bit. There is some showery activity up here in the northwest. The south central into the southeastern United States has this freight train of precipitation moving through and then that eventually sharply turns up the coast actually and we can see a lot of that activity uh, extending all the way into the northeastern united states let's just move into the different regions here real quickly and we can see that for the northwest we have a lot of moderate to heavy showers moving northward through oregon and washington there's some lighter showers along the coastlines of these states uh, we can see that for Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas here as well. Uh, there is some isolated and scattered showers that are light to moderate to even heavy in some spots. So we're going to be watching for those things as well. Now for the four corner states, there is some minor activity in there. We're not really going to get into it, but it's isolated activity. Now the flooding has been severe in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, one quick search, or literally if you even just hopped on Facebook this morning, probably you've seen something about it. Uh, if you follow anything that has to do with weather or news or anything like that, you will have probably seen that Dallas and Fort Worth has had devastating flooding, a lot of rescues done last night, and obviously just a terrible, terrible situation, and we're all hoping for the best that nobody, uh, there was no loss of life or any injuries or anything like that, obviously. Loss of property, uh, and mostly cars and potentially property, as in homes, has occurred, so that's a given, but obviously life and health comes before any materialistic things. So we're just hoping that there's no injuries or loss of life. Now, as we zoom into the state of Texas, we're just going to deep dive into it. We can see numerous flood warnings coming in along I-20 here. Um, so for Dallas and Fort Worth, I did that backwards, but Fort Worth and Dallas there, and then areas to the east of those regions all are dealing with these flooding warnings. And we can see just moderate to heavy precipitation persistently occurring, and it already has occurred overnight for a very, very long time. A tornado warning is coming in for areas just to the north of I-20, north of Tyler, near Gilmer, Texas, north of Longview as well. We've had that tornado warning. And actually, I think I'm going to pause this. I usually don't pause it, but I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is more than just a tornado warning. That's an observed tornado warning. So there actually was a tornado near Winona, Hawkins, and heading towards Gilmer a little bit earlier. And now it's coming in as... Uh, a radar indicated tornado warning. So there is no confirmation that there's a tornado on the ground anymore, but there definitely was a little bit earlier on. So I'll have to look into that. I haven't obviously been online. I've just been preparing this video. So I'll have to check that out after this video. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like a tornado has officially occurred actually there in Texas. So to make matters even worse, we've actually had a tornado now for the state of Texas. Obviously just a terrible situation like I mentioned earlier. Now we can see that this moisture isn't just for Texas, although that's where we've seen the worst of the conditions so far. We can see these areas of heavy and persistent precipitation is occurring for states like Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and even into Georgia. As we can see, literally you can see with your eyes this southern moisture heading in from the Gulf. We see these thunderstorms riding along those areas of uh, humidity and overall just moisture heading in from the Gulf. And this is feeding into this cold front that is basically stationary at this front, just stretching across the region. So we have that frontal boundary, and then we have all this moisture heading in, uh, meeting up with it, and, and just clashing with it. And that is what is creating this monster flooding event and just heavy precipitation event for these states. Now, these areas of isolated and scattered thunderstorms underneath coming in with the moisture might feature some sudden downpours as well as some other severe weather-related Things, so be on the lookout for that as well, but that's nothing you guys aren't used to down there to the south. The very obscure thing is this pocket of very persistent precipitation happening. Again, all the way from Oklahoma and Texas through Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and into Georgia and South Carolina here as well. We can see this area of storminess kind of stretching up the coast here as well as this same boundary here does this. We can see the storminess kind of heading along this region. Uh, and that is moving mostly offshore here for the mid-Atlantic. But for the northeast here, we can see that these areas are actually still onshore with some moderate to heavy precipitation for a lot of the New England and northeast states as well. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the model guidance. First off, that upcoming temperature pattern where there's a lot of new information referring to the Arctic blast coming up in the upcoming pattern like I mentioned earlier. We'll also dive into the upcoming storminess. There's still some nor'easter activity potentially expected as well as tropical activity. So we'll also dive into the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Now, first things first, we're diving into the temperature pattern. We're already in a colder in the east pattern overall. So we can see that for most of those areas I circled in, we're dealing with below normal temperatures. And most of the areas out west in North America, we can see we're dealing with warmer than normal conditions. This is called a positive PNA pattern. Now, by the time we're reaching tomorrow afternoon, we can see this positive PNA really trending in. Although the cooler temperatures get a little bit suppressed to the south as some warm air is able to trickle trickle its way overall into the eastern United States here on Tuesday. Uh, now for Wednesday, we can see a lot of cooler temperatures for these regions, uh, mostly warmth again for the west, which is going to help that cold air establish itself. We can see primarily cold air here for the eastern United States also on Saturday, August 27th here according to this model. Uh, this is going to be Sunday, uh, the 29th here. We can see some cooler temperatures trending in for the West. Will this be the end of that positive PNA pattern? Well, by the time we're reaching Tuesday, the warm temperatures return out West. Uh, we do see some cooler temperatures trickling in for the East, but really it's the long range look that we're going to be really interested in. Now by Wednesday, this is going to be September, or better yet, this is going to be August 31st, the final day of August. We could see really far above normal temperatures just prevailing here. Out west, we see just tons of super, super warm temperatures there. And then we can see a lot of cooler air able to make its way in here for the eastern United States. This is one of those Arctic blasts, and it's really apparent by September 1st. Uh, really fitting that on the very, very first day of a month, we'll be dealing with uh, really just seasonable weather, or unseasonably cold, better yet, actually. Uh, but it's going to feel a lot more like October Deep, deep fall temperatures actually here to begin September on September 1st. We see these greens, which is 10 to 15 degrees below normal. The blues within the greens are going to be 15 to 25 degrees below normal. Very, very far departures from normal. And we have these super high above normal temperatures out west, just blocking, completely blocking that cold air and forcing it to move around that warm air mass and head into the eastern the United States. That is the driving force behind this pattern. September 2nd, we can still see this Arctic blast in place. September 3rd, uh, it looks like it's maybe dying down a little bit with just some uh, darker greens still remaining, but I see another cold air mass maybe trying to move in and meet up with it and possibly make things a little bit more potent again. Sunday, September 4th, here's the look. September 5th, which will be a Monday, uh, a little bit less potent with it. We had a pretty long ride with that cooler air, but it looks like things might be warming back up. Uh, and then September 6th, which will be a Tuesday, we see mostly cooler air out here, but again, not super potent anymore. Uh, but we do see that Arctic blast primarily from the 1st till about the 5th or 6th of September. Uh, so definitely, definitely a deep, cool air event uh, potentially taking place, bringing fall-like temperatures and certainly an Arctic blast as that cold air blasts down from Canada into the eastern United States. Now, as far as upcoming storminess, let's just talk about it. I mean, we're going to see mostly a lot of stormy activity throughout these regions, the Gulf and eastern states there. Uh, let's just move this all the way towards kind of midweek. So this will be Thursday the 25th. Uh, we see a lot of this activity still underneath here. We see another pocket of activity up to the top. This could be a northern jet um, southern jet type setup, which would mean a lot of the activities to the south here in this southern jet. A lot of the activities also in that northern jet. Now I'm just drawing all over the screen, but two separate areas of uh, precipitation, basically. Now by the time we're reaching uh, Sunday, the 28th of August, we can see a lot of storminess in these regions, uh, primarily impacting uh, there in the middle the United States. Nor'easters cannot be ruled out during this pattern. We can see primarily a lot of that activity is in the eastern United States. And actually, by the time we're reaching uh, Wednesday, August 31st, we can see this is when a real, that really deep trough moves in. We see a ton of activity around for the Gulf states in the eastern United States. And the jet stream looks about like this. Um, I would not be surprised to see a more major storm system try to move along that northern jet just like that up the coast. That would be pretty classic. September 1st here, it looks like we maybe try to get a nor'easter developing here. 
September 1st through 2nd time frame. It's going to move up just like this along the jet stream. This would be pretty favorable for something like that to happen in this type of a pattern. It looks like that does try to happen in a more minor fashion, but it still nevertheless does kind of occur that way. Now we also start to get some tropical concerns here uh, just offshore of the southeast around September 4th. Fifth time frame here, September 5th, we see this moving up the east coast basically. Uh, still a relatively weak tropical system, 996 millibar low pressure center. Would maybe be between category, category 1 status and tropical storm status, somewhere in there, probably more tropical storm, but it's hard to speculate obviously. Um, then it becomes a 979 millibar low pressure center offshore of the Middle Eastern United States here, Mid-Atlantic, uh, and kind of like the Northeast here, 979 millibar low pressure centers. is certainly a hurricane by that point, um, but it looks to kind of be a fish storm. And what I mean by that is it stays over water. So it's not a people storm, it's a fish storm, according to this particular model run. But this is so far out that it's kind of changing every, every run. So we need to watch it closely, but things can change dramatically over time. Uh, in multiple different ways. Now, total precipitation through the next 15 days or so, we're taking a look at practically no precipitation of, uh, for the white regions. Your grays will be a tenth of an inch to, or less. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Your reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns will be five to 10 inches of precipitation. So we see primarily the Eastern United States seeing a ton and a lot quieter out West. Now, Let's just dive into the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook real quickly. Here we are digging a look at it. You can see we're still a code yellow here with a 20% chance of development over the next five days with our tropical disturbance here. Uh, have not increased or decreased in this probability. We're still just at a 20% chance over the next five days and still a 0% chance over the next two days. So it's that final three days of the five-day period where we're really watching for potential development as this one heads closer and closer to the Caribbean. Uh, we're going to have to just continue to track this one daily. And as we do, be sure to subscribe because we are going to be watching this literally daily. Also, like the video if you did like it and leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.